Welcome to Knit One, Heart Part two. 2, Episode 177. I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Winnie. And if this is your first time watching the show, thank you for watching. And if you are a return viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, up front, top of the show, we're doing a book review this week. Um, it is a cooperative press book called Sock Architecture. Architecture, yeah. And we're also going to show you a new pattern by um, Carrie Weimer, who is Coggy of the High Fiber Diet, and she's doing a pattern giveaway. So we'll announce that contest and do that book review in Gossip and Innuendo. So hang in for that. Great. Um, any other things going on? I don't think so, and I think I go first this you week. You do. So, um, the first thing on the needles is something crazy. Um, I decided, because the weather got colder, I don't know. For a while, I've been thinking about making an afghan. Okay. Um, just a knit afghan, a simple one. When I was up at my friend Lois's camp in Maine, she had made a chevron blanket. And I think hers was called Missoni Inspired Blanket. And it has a ton of different colors in it. Um, and I wove in all the ends for her because I don't mind weaving in ends. Oh, so this was recent. It was this summer. So oh, anyway, okay. I saw it, and it was a chevron blanket. And I thought it was kind of cute. And so I've been thinking in the back of my head for the last couple of weeks, I really just need, I'm, I'm very busy doing some technical editing right now. And so I really just need to take a break with something that's, Mind-numbing. And I also needed a break in between fish hats. I'm almost done with the other fish hat, but I need Well, I don't need it just yet either. No. So, so um, I went on, uh, I went online, and I looked at the Missoni inspired one, and I really like it. Lois's is gorgeous. But um, it's a paid-for pattern, and it requires a lot of different colors, and I didn't want to deal with that many colors just because... I didn't want to have to order the yarn. I wanted to be able to go to a craft store and buy an inexpensive um, acrylic yarn that didn't feel gross. <laughs> um, so I found a pattern that I really did like, and it's the Patton's... Um, now I'm not going to be able to remember what it's called. It's a Patton's pattern. And... Um, I don't think I put it on you modified there. it, right? I modified it so much, it's not even the same. Basically, it's a patents pattern called Spicy Chevron Blanket. And it, it works with six colors of patents in a worsted weight. So I didn't want six colors. I, I decided, well, I wasn't sure. So I went to the craft store, and I found these four colors that I like. In I like them, too. This yarn, which I've never heard of before, called Loop... And loops and threads impeccable. It, where'd you go, Michael's? Yeah. That's Michael's yarn. It's store brand. Well, feel it. It's not horrible. No, I've used it. It's very nice. It's It feels very, like, cottony. Like, I kind of liked the feeling of yeah. it. I was like, this is going to make a nice, heavy... Because it's, it's for my living room. And I have children that get disgusting things and they're, they're hands off of my my loom blanket that I made out of wool but I need something that they can use without worrying that I can throw in the washing machine so I found this had this is um aqua charcoal gray white and grass green those were the four colors that I liked they didn't have any other colors that really appealed to me so I came home and I looked at the spicy chevron pattern did you find it? No, spicy. S P I. There's no E in spicy. Sorry. I'm throwing E's everywhere. There you go. So the spicy chevron pattern has, as you can see, different widths of chevrons, but there is like a pattern to it so that you know roughly what to do. It um, looks like you do reverse uh, or. Garter stitch sometimes. Well, yeah, they, so I modified it heavily. The first thing that I did is I changed the number of stitches to cast on. Um, the second thing that I did is rather than doing a um, <clears throat> ribbed edging, I did a seed stitch edging. I think it looks prettier. Um, I'm also slipping one stitch at the end mm. of every row because I'm going to knit a seed stitch edge on the entire side of both both sides of the blanket when I'm done. So it will have seed stitch all the way around it. I just think that will make it look more finished. 
Otherwise, the edge was supposed to be ribbed. I don't like the way that it looked. So. so why are you doing it after the fact and not doing it while? Because I want to knit it on. I want to pick up the yeah, stitches okay. and knit it on. So it, it's got more of a stable edge. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want... Um, and I also didn't want to have to do color work carrying the gray all the way up oh, the Oh, yeah, side. that's true, too. Sorry. So, um, but... I, I wanted the reinforced edge, too. I just think that that would be better. If I didn't, I could have done a ribbed, they had a ribbed edging, or I could have done a seed stitch edging mm -hmm. in the colors. But I just, mm -hmm. I, I just like the idea of the border being the same as the edge. So I changed that. Then I changed the stitch in um, the increase stitches, and I changed the decrease stitches, because the way that they were doing it, I didn't like the way that it looked, so I changed it to the way that I liked it. This is how it looks so far. Of course, you're in the middle of the row. I'm in the middle of the row, yeah. Um, and then instead of doing um, six rows of color, six colors, I'm only doing four. So I also changed the way that the pattern works out. So I'm almost done. The, this is almost one whole single repeat of the color pattern. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty simple. Now, where, did you take the pattern, the color pattern from the, the striping? Patterns? Well, I, the striping is inspired by it, but it's I, I'm only working with four colors instead no, of I six. No, I know. But what made you come up with the sequence? Oh, well, this this the sequence for this 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 and this are all in the pattern. I just took out Several I took out colors. six rows, basic six stripes. I took out. And organize them so they went together like this. So, um, like one, there'll be another strip of green, another green stripe up here, and then it will start with the blue. This blue down here, and it will work through the pattern again. And I think it's probably going to take like four or five repeats of this. I don't know. We'll see. It's pretty wide. It's like about four and a half, four and a half, well, five feet wide. It's, right? Yes. So um, I can just knit it until I think it's big enough. And, um, oh, the other thing is the pattern had um, some of the rows were in garter stitch. Yeah, I saw that. So there were some garter ridges. I didn't like the way that it looked. No, I didn't So either. I did all, um, all knitting. And all of my increases are on the front. I could have done some increases on the back, but i just rather do them all in one row. So basically, it's one row of increases and decreases, and then one row of purling on the wrong side with no... I foresee design. fighting over it. Yeah, it's going to be pretty. And I, I've just, I cast it on on um, Sunday, and it is Wednesday, and this is how much I've knit on it. So it's gone pretty fast. Considering How many balls of each color did you purchase? I, I started out with two of each color, mm -hmm. and um, I might need to get more. I'm, I'm definitely going to need more gray um, because I use a lot of the gray. The blue and the um, gray stitches have wider stripes than the um, the green and the... Is that going to be throughout the blanket? Yes. Like, okay. So I think I'm going to end up using a little bit more of the blue and the gray. Um, I After one repeat, I still have most of my blue skein, but you can see the gray skein is getting kind of worn down because I did the edging with it. And I'm going to need enough left over, obviously, to knit an edge on the side, both sides. Yeah. So. And you're going to keep it gray? Yep. The edging is going to be gray. I really like it, though. It's... Colors that I that appeal to me, they go with my um, living room, and I just like it, and it's relaxing. So um, you can get an idea from Pat and Spicy Chevron Blanket, or you can look at my notes. Um, I already put a project page up for this, and I explained everything that I did as a modification um, to make it look more like this. I just, I can't ever just do something. They didn't have what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the different, I like how the... Stripes vary on this, so they're not all, like, the same. Mm -hmm. That's what I really... And they don't go in the same order right away. So I liked that, but I didn't like anything else about the pattern. Let's just put it that way. I like it. It feels nice. It feels like it'll wash well. I might kill it first. Heat it up so that it loses its... Um, so it gets stripey. Kill the acrylic. Have I've you ever heard, heard of that? that? No. It's when you, like, iron it uh... and get it to be really, like... 
smooth and it doesn't come back after you wash it. How do you do that? Just heat it with an iron. You gotta be oh. careful not to melt yeah. it. Yeah. It's a fine line that. between heating it until it loses its like stiff structure and melting, and melting it. it. So I don't know. I might do that. So that's number one. And the other thing that I have on the needles, and I did work on it this week quite a bit, is the fish hat. I'm very close to doing the last couple sets of decreases. This is Fish Hat Dead or Alive from Nitty. The only problem is I got a little gung-ho up here and I made the stripe a little too big and I forgot to decrease. So this one's going to be a little wonky shaped. Sorry. Right. And that's when I put it aside and said, Time out. I'm going to work on something else for a little bit. So, yeah, that one's out of Our Canyon Nature Wool in pink and Cascade Heather's um, purple. And that's all I have actively on the needles right now, and I imagine for a while. I have the same two projects I've had for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> but I do have progress. See? You do? Wow. I knit it while I was... This is not just work knitting. It is portable knitting, because my blanket is not portable. So Max had a soccer game this weekend. I knit. Cool. I knit at work. Um, I think I knit in the car. So it's my portable. I like how the pink and gray. Okay, so I switched back to the magic loop method. And yeah. if you look carefully, you'll see why. Mm. I was stretching the stitches out too much that it actually looks like I was up a needle size. Wow. Um, it'll block out. I'm not worried about it. Uh, but I just... And actually, I like how loose it was, but I just I didn't want to keep stretching it out. So, but that tells you how much I, I, this is how much I did in a week. Wow. Yeah. Because that's, or maybe like here, because I knit quite a bit there. Anyways, um, this is my fake duotone cowl. Who's it by? Orange Fla Fla flower yarns. Orange flower yarns. It's a free, free pattern? Yep. I don't even know, because... <laughs> I just looked at pictures, and I'm like, yeah, that looks good. Um, but it's Snitches Yarn and her syncopation, and the color name is Zoot Suit. So it's pink and gray, and this is the the pattern that the striping is making. I'm not doing any of this. This is all the yarn, which I really like. I do, too. It's pretty. It I is like pretty. It. It's soft, too. Um, looks like I'm tangled up here. Hold on. Nope. I'm going to tangle it even more. So, as I'm out, I'm just going to show you this is, I'm doing it from the outside in, and this is how much I have left. So I'm just going to knit until I run out, join them together, and see how long it makes it. Cool. Maybe I won't. Maybe depending on how long it makes, I'll just make a double scarf or something. I don't We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what That's happens. That's the excitement. Anything could happen. I know. With me, it's the truth, too. And then I'm doing my diagonal baby blanket. I am making some progress. I've reduced the stitches. Well, good. And you can actually see. So here is the reduced part. Here's my little corner. <laughs> so what I did is I, I knit up to um, 150 stitches because uh, I was really kind of getting <sighs> tired at that point. It calls for 160. This is a free pattern off a of Lion brand. And then I knit one row front and back without increasing right. or decreasing to make it more of a square and then I started decreasing and so this is how wide it is which sorry it's pretty wide it's a good enough for a baby blanket well, it's wide enough for a baby yep and um, so now that I'm decreasing hopefully it will go faster but in all honesty uh, besides portable knitting I have not done any knitting so this Baby won't outgrow it. No. <laughs> Not for a while. Not for a few years. Yeah, and, you know, the cold weather's coming in, so. <laughs> so. We'll get there. Um, that's it for Rate Your Date. No, for On, on, uh, the, on dance the Dance Card. card. Um, rate Your Date. I don't have any dates to rate. No, I don't either. No, because I've been just mostly knitting this. Um, Whirlwind Romance, nothing. I have done nothing on it, and I... 
I have like almost a whole sweater worth of yarn spun. I need to like finish it. But I just then my spinning wheel's down. It's right in the corner of the room. I know, I but you just don't spin. have the spinning mojo going right no, now. No, I haven't had time. Um, I'm really busy right now between school and this tech editing that I'm doing, and the canning, the never-ending canning. I feel like I have no free time to myself. Um, so nothing on whirlwind romance. Future dates. Um, this is this and the hat are my only future dates right now. Um, after and they're this not gets, even future. Yeah, I, I don't I can't even see beyond these things. I, I don't have anything that I'm excited to knit. For some reason, I've been thinking about doing this blanket since I went to Lois's in August. It's just been sort of percolating in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, I kept hoping I'd find something similar to it that I could buy so that I didn't have to make one. But I didn't. See, it's funny because I would love to make myself one because I've made several. I would love to make myself one. I didn't realize I was so close to the camera. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but the problem is, is we have so many blankets and throws in my house that there is no need. Well, we just threw away some of our rattier blankets. We don't have any ratty ones, and if they're ratty, they're favorites for a reason and I wanted something that would go do you know what I mean yeah I, I wanted something that would go more with my decor and less because you know my kids each have a um fleece blanket that they, a giant fleece blanket that they wear and but those go with their bedrooms not with my living room I wanted something that we could use in the living room that matched see we have a brown leather cook leather couch everything matches <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. But well, I'm just thinking for when I put my house on I know. the market. I know. I have everything matching. Maybe they'll want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, yeah. No, nobody's getting my blanket. No, I don't blame them. But, I blame um, you. So, yeah, I, I don't really have any future dates. My right future now. dates, um, I really, after the blanket, I'm going to cast on for some fingerless mitts because it was chilly enough that uh, the last couple of mornings waking up that I actually wore mittens. Oh, I can believe it. I went for a walk this morning taking my kid to school, and it was pretty chilly. I should have pulled out mine that you made me. Yeah. There. Well, I was uh, contemplating on the new yarn that I got maybe doing fingerless, but I think we're all supposed to be doing socks. Yeah. Is it all socks, or is I it just know. any project? <laughs> I have no. I didn't know there were rules. We'll find out know. on Friday. We'll find out if there are rules on Friday. Don't cast anything on until Friday. Well, no, we're not supposed to. I thought this was something we were going to be working on. Oh, right there. Yeah, right back in. Sorry. Getting ahead of ourselves. So, um, yeah, just my future date of um, getting some fingerless mitts out of that rabbit. Page with, no, rabbit. The yarn, the green yarn that I have, rabbit. The woolen rabbit. Thank you. See? <laughs> Page would I don't know. It's not even close. I have no idea. And then rabbit. Somehow I was thinking about Tess kitten yarn that Denise and no, I. No, I didn't. Mind about. Oh, that's right. I have that too. You have kitten? No, no. Tess yarn. Oh yeah. Mm. What about that? Yeah, I won't be buying anything at Rhinebeck. I don't need anything. You say that every year. I bought what that one skein at Rhinebeck. You always buy something. I buy one thing. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna be casting on that. Woolen Rabbit. I think that's worsted for at least some fingerless mints, and we'll go from there. That has a, it's a cashmere blend, isn't it? Something nice. It might be. Yeah, I remember when you bought that. It might be. I was contemplating maybe doing um, ribbing from here up, and then so that it can be folded, folded down. down. I think that's a good idea. Because even though I was in a, you know, the the my coworkers say that the shuttle buses are warm, but you know, it never can take too much. Oh, side note. I won wool socks two days in a row now. Well, good for you. Everybody else is always oh, cold in here. I said, not for me. <laughs> I get nice toasty toes. Yeah, my heat came on yesterday. Yeah. Because no. I had the windows open, and I didn't realize how cold it got overnight. Oh. All of a sudden, I'm upstairs working. I'm doing this tech edit. I'm up in my office, and I'm like, it's so hot. And I realized the radiators are radiating heat. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. My AC was on upstairs. That's funny. So I went downstairs, and it was like um, 68 in here, but the heat is set to come on at 70. So I was like, ooh, I turned it down to like 50 so that it wouldn't come See, on. See, that heat isn't even on. We have a way of turning it off when we don't want to use it. 
whether it would reach that temperature or not. So well, over, my goal is not to turn it on until October. Overnight. I mean, November. Overnight, it goes down to 50. So if it, if it doesn't go below 50 in the house, the heat won't come on. But at 8 in the morning, it goes up to 70, and then it drops down again later in the right. day. Just so that it warms up the house a little bit when we get up. And... Um, I, and during that time, it, it, I guess it was like 68 or 67 in here, and it got the heat came on. And I don't, we have the heat turned off upstairs because well, we get I mean. enough heat from radiating. But I mean, heat. it could go down to 40, and our heat wouldn't turn on because it is physically turned off. Oh, yeah, we don't do that. We yeah. like we want it to come on because we don't want our pipes to freeze. So. Well, uh, hopefully for me, that would never get to that point. But <laughs> I, I, My house is so crazy that we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. We had our pipes freeze when we lived in Somerville, and it was unpleasant. So, anyway, um, nothing for future dates, really, except for Sheila's fingerless cast mitts. on some fingerless mitts. Um, Only after the light gets done, though. Bobbles and bling. I don't have any bobbles and bling this week. I do. It's all right, you. I was just reading something that kind of. So, <laughs> probably to explain a little bit, I know, uh, on the <laughs> instant message. Probably uh, to explain some of this. Where's my. Oh, here it is. Um, somebody posted on Instagram a picture of the skein of yarn Denise. and fingering weight. I was going to get there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought Denise, you forgot it. No, was. Denise, mad about Matisse, our friend, uh, posted that she was going to get Desert Vista Dye Works. Uh, she ordered it in the Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, but I don't think she said what colorway it was. That is the colorway. It is the color, but I don't think she said it. No, she posted it, but it had a picture and it had had Dio. That was me. No, hers no, did hers too. too. I don't know. I I just. <laughs> Anyways, it w it was posted Dio, Dia de los Muertos, and I'm like, oh, that's really pretty. It's a striping yarn, uh, bright colors. Twelve different colors, I think. Uh, with black in between. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And then, what, the next day you said, well, I'm going to go to? Well, my side of the story is I saw that, Den well, I knew that Desert Vista Dye Works was doing a big sale I took of the, all their colorways. I did this. Here it is. Desert Vista Dye Works. Does it Vista or Vista? I pronounce it Vista. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I apologize. So, my side of the story is Wendy posted saying that she was going to buy it. I And, I, and I, I had seen Denise buying something. I didn't pay attention to what she bought. I went on there. I There were like 44 pages of colorways that she was she, doing. She's doing all her colorways And I over saw again. that one, and I was like, ooh, Day of the Dead. I love that. So, um... Wendy posted that she was getting it, so I looked into it, and I saw this, and I purchased it. I said, well, I'm going to do it, too, instead of twinsies. We used to I'm looking triplets. it up now to see what she posted. And um, <laughs> I didn't realize until afterwards that I had gotten the same color as Denise. Like, I don't know if it was subconscious. See, yeah, here it or... is. Here it is. Oh, yeah, she did write what it was. So then Wendy said she got it, so I got it, and then we decided we're rooming with a bunch of people at a house at Rhinebeck. We've all decided we all purchased it, right? Yes. We all purchased the same colorway, and we're going to cat. From what I understand, I'm going to help Denise with her toe and do a sock. We all cast on while we're there. That's what I understood it as. Whether or not it's all socks, I'm not sure. But, but we all bought the We all yarn. bought the same exact color. But I, I thought I never noticed what the yarn color oh, was. Okay. I went through 44 pages, and that's the one that stuck out to me. And I was like, ooh, I love that one. So I ordered it, and then Denise said, oh, that's the same one that I bought. Right. And then you were like, I just bought some. Well, I specifically <laughs> went looking for that right. color. You saw the colorway. I said, well, I'm going to join the bandwagon. I bought mine, however, in sport weight. So I need to find... A contrasting color in one of these, um, which I'm sure I have, or it can double up fingering weight to make it sport weight. To um, we got an alert in front of me. <laughs> Rania, oh, a little... sorry. <laughs> like, so it you can't see up, it, but I can. It see came it. up on all of my things. So I want to find a contrasting color, or I'm not a, a similar color to any of this 
for my toes because this is um toes and heels. This is only two seventy four. Not that that wouldn't be enough, but I would just like to have a little extra. I like to have my socks a little longer. So I'm going to try and find a color in my stash somewhere that will match here. So really, if you think about it, you were the reason that all the people bought that because yes. Denise bought it and then I accidentally bought the same color as her because Denise and I like the same colors apparently since everything we buy is the yeah. same. And then you I were, were like, I like that too. And then it just like snowballed. It snowballed from there. So That's going to be fun though. I think it will be. It's going to be like a I mean, I will definitely wind this up probably this week. Cause I want to do a photo montage of like everybody's different project in the same colorway because I think that would be interesting. Yeah. So I might do that. That'll it, be fun. It'll be fun. I mean, in a way, it's like I kind of almost want to do fingerless mitts on this, but I'm going to have... Your other one? Yeah, I'd rather wear um, Yeah, these as yeah. socks. The, I'm pretty sure that other yarn is cashmere blend. I, it I'm sure it is. I can look it up. Blend, I remember. So I think but, that'll be more of a glove so thing. This is my... It's also Sheila's birthday. Which Friday is my Friday birthday. Is. Today is... <laughs> Wednesday? Which I knew, I remembered it yesterday and then I forgot, but so this is not wrapped. I had a gift bag, fortunately, just lying in my bin to go upstairs, so it's in the gift bag. I bought you two things. Well, I bought you one thing and I made you something. And it's tissue. <laughs> I didn't have anything to wrap it in. <laughs> Aww. That was always for you. Was it? Yes. <laughs> and my mom, only my mom knew. I love them. <laughs> Boy, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, I have to make that for Sheila's birthday. I love him. He's the best. I was hoping for this when you I said know. I gotta go, and then I heard that I'm like, Woo! but that wasn't the thing that I had to get. That was oh. my other thing. I bought. I ordered something for you on Etsy. <laughs> you have to take it out. See if you oh, can guess I what it is. I did guess what it's it is. Like I the best thing. Can I you could. even believe I got this on Etsy? <laughs> At first, I'm looking, I'm like, they're not mushrooms. It's, oh, my God. They're little, they're little red blood cells. <laughs> yes. And there's a needle hanging over here. Yeah, that goes down. I hope so. All right, let's see if you can see, see the little red blood cells. In a vial. And then the little needle. That's <laughs> so cute. And then there's a little heart. That's so cute. Thank you. Like you they get squished. Yeah. Can you even believe I found that? No. I looked on Etsy. I kid you not for phlebotomy. And, and there was phlebotomy up. jewelry. I was like, oh, I'm getting that for her. <laughs> Is that not oh the best God. thing ever? Yes. <laughs> I bought that in June. <laughs> Do you remember when I gave it's you those right, phlebotomy pens? I have a pens? Christmas gift that I've had for about a month or two. <laughs> Do you remember the phlebotomy pens? Yes. Yes. That's cool. I love it. I'm going to wear it tomorrow and see if anyone notices See if anyone it. notices what it is. But yes, Paul, as soon as I saw Paul the Mushroom Boy, I was like, I I'm totally I naked. nerve him. Oh, now i got to figure out where to put him. I've had a Christmas present for you since the spring. Sometimes I see something, I'm like, Well, that's I what happened. I saw this, that. and I'm like, oh, this will be perfect for Wendy. Oh, Paul thank you so the Mushroom much. Boy. And this hat is made out of Sundara. <laughs> love that. I love him. I know. He's kind of awesome. I might put him by my TV so I can see him every day. Isn't he cute? He is cute. Thank you so much. I was thinking you're welcome. Yeah, I told my mom about it, and I was like, I don't know if she's going to like it, though. It's kind of weird. So then I was like, I'm going to tell her that I'm making it for myself, and I'm going to show the pattern on the show, and if she likes it, then I'll know. <laughs> and then you liked it, and I'm like, <laughs> He's so cute. But I, I, be totally, looking at it like I wanted to make the Rita the Rabbit. What do I have right here? Have you fit it? Oh. So Rita mm. is, is just like him, only it's like a modification. And um, so I, when I was looking for Rita, I had to buy a pattern in order. Right. And I, I, so I looked at the other patterns. I was like, oh, i got to make that for Sheila. So The cute. hat took forever. I know. And... Um, and then I realized after I got him all done and I went to start Rita the Rabbit that I needed a different one to make Rita the Rabbit. So then I bought the um, Flyboy one. I'll probably make that for myself. I like that one better. But um, I that just reminded me of you. I know you like I know. mushrooms. I do like mushrooms, and I think I like mushrooms because my mom likes mushrooms. I know mushrooms. that's why. And so I was like, that's what I'm making. 
Everyone Thank kept you. asking me, what's, where is the mushroom? Lily knew it was for you, too. Lily and my mom. Well, I have to say, Lily kept a good secret. That's right. But I do. I love this. This is so <laughs> That's the thing I had to get out. It was like in my little, I had it stuck in this box down in the bottom so that I would know where it was. And um, I thought of it yesterday, and then I just was so busy last night, I forgot to wrap it. And I'm like, dang. But, yeah, I wish I could remember the name of the store that I got it from. And there's no message or note or anything. But I'm pretty sure that there is not, there was not a lot of phlebotomy stuff on Etsy. So if you search on phlebotomy, you can find it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So now I loved the little red blood cells. I thought that was so cute. Oh, I think it's real bad. That I put it on right. I want the needles to be. Oh. I love Etsy. You can find anything. That's where I got Sheila's phlebotomy pins, and that's where I got the phlebotomy necklace. And I think that's pretty darn awesome. It so is happy awesome. birthday! Thank you. The big 44. Wow, you're old. I am old. Not as old as me and Cam. No. Old. Cam's always got three years older than me. Me too. Yeah. I'm almost four years older than you. Three and a half. My brother's four years older than me. And I love throwing it over his face all the time. <laughs> so that's so. it for Bubbles and Bling. Yes. And now we're going to show you the pattern that Carrie Weimer designed. And then we're going to do our book review. Gossip in a new window is happening right now. Um, let me get to the pattern. So, um, this is a pattern. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I did some tech editing for Carrie. I did the last pattern that we showed and I did this one for her and I love it. The sample was knit in Wolmai's twin and it's called mixing the grape and the grain. And the reason she calls it that is because you crochet an edging and this is what the edging looks like. And then Pretty. you pick up the crocheted edge and you Ooh. knit the rest of the shawl into a crescent shape. Yeah. It's very clever. Um, but it's definitely something you would need to know how to do crochet, your basic crochet mm -hmm. stitches, um, more than just to chain. Right. Um, you need to know uh, if you double crochet, chain stitch, um, slip stitch, single crochet, that kind of thing. And, um, but it's a really pretty, it's different. I like it that she used both yeah. things on it. Yes. And so, um, she sent this pattern to us so that you can have a chance to win it. So if you're interested in something that you both knit and crochet, then this is the pattern for you. So I'm going to put a contest thread up in the group and you can win a copy of Mixing the Grape and the Grain with, um, I love her little story of why she called it this. She was once told that mixing crochet with knitting was like mixing the grape and the grain. It should never be none. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the saying, mixing the grape and the grain is mixing wine and beer. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, the way they say don't mix your hard liquor and your malt liquor because you'll you get, never get sick. sick. Yeah. And um, so that's what somebody told her about this. And she's saying, I don't care. I can do whatever I want and making a very pretty Woolmise shawl. It is very pretty. It is very pretty. It's a shame I don't crochet. I know. I, I really I don't. told her I didn't think you crocheted. I don't. So anyway, in the thread, I want you to tell me um, what yarn you'd use to knit and crochet this. And um, next week, Actually, we'll give it two weeks. It, yeah. Two weeks from now. So episode 179, we'll draw a prize winner of this pattern, Mixing the Grape and the Grain, Grape and the Grain by um, Carrie Weimer, also known as Coggy of the High Fiber Diet um, audio podcast. So you can also check her out on her podcast. So that's the contest that we're running this week. I also want to mention that I did open up the stash busting thread. And yes, it is I'm for sorry. September and October. And we are going to draw two winners at the end of October. And that's because neither one of us got around to opening the thread up until, like, a few days ago. So half of the month had kind of gone by. Yeah. So we're just going to do two in one month. 
And we need a little we're prize We're two drawing. prizes. We're two, two prizes. prizes. Right? One for September and one for October. But we're going to draw them both in October. So if you put in, you have two chances to win. So that's kind of a bonus. Yeah. So, um... Well, you can put in as many as you want, but... Right, but I mean, you have double the chances because we're going to draw two people. Right. Of course, more people will probably be in the thread, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not a statistician. I can't work all that stuff out in my brain. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's all happening. And now we are going to review this very Sock cool architecture. book. It's called Sock Architecture. I'm trying to go to the front. It is Sock Architecture, Heels, Toes, and Techniques for Knitting Awesome Socks by Lara Neal, N-E-E-L, and it's published by Cooperative Press. And by the way, our friend at Cooperative Press said more books coming soon. Oh, cool. So I love it because we get to review them and you guys get to win them. Yes, so and um, I have to say I'm excited about this book. This book is cool. It's typical cooperative press format that if you hit on the, it's an electronic book. If you hit on the pattern, it'll bring you right to the pattern page. There we go. And then <laughs> at the, I know. <laughs> then at the end of the pattern page, if you're done with it, this little thing brings you back. A little sock. Will bring you back to the um, table of contents. Yeah, I love. I, I that. love that feature. That navigation feature is awesome. So this is it's. It's a book all about techniques. Um, I would recommend that you've at least knit one sock. It could work for a true beginner if you don't get overwhelmed by detail. This I mean, book is packed yeah. with options, techniques, instruction, <clears throat> detail. It is, it's almost like the Bible on how to knit any sock in the world is like in this book. So... Maybe a very like that, well, <laughs> it's it's pretty. It's like it's a, so. The first fifty pages big. are techniques <laughs> based on uh, several different heel techniques, several different toe techniques. Whether it's toe up, heel uh, or cuff down, and the heel. There's one section that I looked at. I have never done an afterthought heel. I've heard many people complain that the afterthought heel doesn't fit well. If I'm going to do an afterthought heel type deal, I might as well do a short row heel or a fish right. lips kiss heel. She's got a section of afterthought heel with gussets. So that might so, be the answer to people who don't like the fit of an afterthought heel, but who like the flexibility of knitting an afterthought heel. Especially if you're doing something like self-striping yarn and you want to do exactly. a contrasting toe. Right. And heel. This might be a, a good option that fits well and works with that kind of a situation. We don't want to stop knitting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there's a, a slew of different heel techniques, or not techniques, but... I mean, we should say that when you start out the book, she gives you a history of um, sock design. A brief history of sock design, which I think is fascinating. And then she gives you a section on how to measure your foot and type of foot shapes and how to get gauge. You know, the usual um, stuff that you get. Can I have a Kleenex? <laughs> I can feel it coming. I know, well, that's why I have one in my hand, because it's sitting right well, here. I didn't feel like I was going to sneeze until right that minute. I know, that was oh. just so, okay. I have a Kleenex. I was trying not to sneeze, so I got the Kleenex. So, um, she tells you how to deal with gaps, and how to do everything, and how to um, fix the holes, and... She does, you know, all those little details, and then she gets into the situation where she always talking about where she starts talking about cast on for toe up and cast on for cuff down and the different kind of heels and the different kind of toes. Tell them about the chart. We well, loved the chart. First off, before we even get there, she gets into the foot shapes and the foot measurements, length of, of your foot A and B. So, I mean, there's all of that. It goes into that. But what I thought was really kind of cool was there was this chart. It's called Top down heel types and their features. So it gives you a list of heel types, and then it gives you on the top does it have picked up stitches? Does it have a gusset? Does it have short rows, grafting patterns in the book with this heel? So you can go down. Wendy goes, What's the laziest heel? <laughs> the one that says no picked up stitches, short row heel. I'm like, Oh, that's why I use yeah. that one. 
<laughs> but it's really nice. Not only can you compare and contrast all of the types together to find out, like if you're somebody who really hates short rows, then you can narrow your list down. Or if you really hate grafting, you can, you know, get rid of that one. If or you, you don't like pick up, picking up stitches. If you hate stitches. gussets, you know, which is um, my, I hate gussets. So I have three options. Short row heel never has gussets. Band heel sometimes does, and ball brigand heel sometimes does. So basically, if I don't want to do um, gusset, I have three options on a top-down heel. Right. And um, then it talks about how to close the um, holes in um, in the afterthought heels. The yarn she uses are gorgeous. Then she goes into the different type of socks that you can do for toe-up socks. Casting on, you know, you got the wide toe, the sideways toe, the round toe. And then there's a toe-up heel chart. And um, on the toe-up heel chart, I have three options that do not have a gusset. The short row heel, the joined heel flap, and the shaped joined heel flap. So that's even cooler. Yep. Of course, the one that doesn't have picked up stitches is the short row heel. So basically, that's the heel that I'm dealing with. <laughs> Yeah. And then after page 50 or 50, 52 to be exact, is uh, when the patterns start. Yes. And there's 17, 17 patterns. patterns. And each pattern gives you some tips for your custom sizing. It can be done with either DPN's Magic Loop, you know, two needles, although I don't know too many people who knit with the two needles anymore. No. And, um... It, there's options and customization and suggestions on every single pattern so that you know what you can work with and how to change it the way that you want it. It's pretty neat. And like we said, in each section there's a chart that tells you which socks has which um, heel feature. And um, that's really helpful. On all the sizes, it goes from women's extra small, women's small, women's medium, men's small, women's large, men's medium, those are the together, men's large, and then adjustable size. So it helps you, you know, for those who do not fit into the normal mode. Yeah. Mold, for those of you who do not have a 64 Thank stitch you. foot. <laughs> and then it tells you how to work out the custom sizing for that specific pattern. Yeah, it's really cool. It is really cool. She does, I think, all of her sock yarn, socks are knit in solid colors, which is kind of nice. It's nice because it helps you to see exactly what's going on with the heel better, you know, because this book is really showcasing the techniques. Um, some of the sock patterns are textured, but they're all knit out of a solid or a semi-solid so that you can really see the architecture of the sock, which is what this book is about, sock architecture. So it's, I think it's interesting. There are some toes that I've never seen before in here. Yeah. There are some heels. I had never heard of a short row heel with gussets. That's very interesting to me. Um, that might be something that I try once just to see how I like it. Because afterthought heels I, and short row heels with a gusset interest me. And then there's a really good um, section in the back that has some visuals for certain techniques like circular cast on provisional cast on strap closure how to prevent closing and gusset gaps which is always a problem and something called a zigzag bind off i don't know what that is we didn't look into that yet. and then there's a little blurb at the end about the simply socks yarn company my mom uses simply socks yarn company i've used them the several time. times she loves ordering from there. they actually saw blue moon that is a good place to get um Sock yarn and all of the sock yarn that she used in this book, she got through them. And then there's a bibliography in the back of books that she used, reference books and history books and um, pattern books that she used to help put together this whole um, book. So it's, it's pretty interesting. And uh, some of the patterns for a narrow heel, for a medium heel, for a wide heel. It's so. basically any, ooh, excuse me, any sock you can think of 
Mm-hmm. You have options. And it's it's very similar in that way to the other sock book, the um, Bigfoot Nets. Mm-hmm. It gives you a lot of options and techniques and construction so that you can come up with the sock that perfectly fits you. Like if you're like me, I don't really enjoy knitting socks. But when I do knit socks, I like to knit a certain sock. Right. And even before when I was trying, I tried one year to knit 12 pair of socks. I think I made it to eight. Um, I was continuously changing existing sock patterns to go with the techniques. I like a certain toe. I like to knit toe up. I like to knit a short row heel. Like I would change right. everything so that I could always knit the sock that I like. This kind of book is perfect if you're that person. Because once you know how to do a technique, like I don't have to look up how to cast on a toe up sock or how to knit a toe because I just do my toe. Right. You know, no matter like what the toe calls for. No matter for, what it is, it. I do my toe and I just work it out so I get the right number of stitches if it's a pattern. And the same with my heel. I just knit the heel that I like. Right. And go from there. And so it, there's a lot to be said for a book like this that gives you these options. And, you know, Sheila was saying she likes Fish Lips Kiss. But I also like the Spice Boy, the... Um the gusset, the yarnies, the, the gusset sock, and that's the toe up because that fits my foot the best. And I like I like fish lips kiss heel much better than a straight short row. Heel. Yes, if it I was to ever better. do something with the short row, it would definitely be the fish. Kiss I love lips fish lips kiss because it's the laziest heel on the planet. There's no like annoying techniques <laughs> involved, but um, you know now that I find out that there's a short row heel. With the gusset? Or a, or a, what do you call it? Well, there's a sock that I'm looking at right now. Adjoin? Yeah. Adjoin. I like the look of it. The heel is interesting. The heel is interesting, and I'm, I like, it's a simple, I'll go to the front so that you can see. I like the simple lace section of it, because it adds a little bit of interest, interest but it's not without, crazy. but the heel is different. You, TikTok. Would that uh, ridge rub? I don't know. That's I my think that's only interesting. concern with that. It is interesting. It's like you knit it flat, and then but I don't think you do. I know, but it looks like it looks like you knit the foot. It looks like you probably do that and then pick up stitches somehow. It's interesting. Um, so I may cast something like that on just to try it. out. Yeah, just to try it out. Cause so we know that if we're excited about this book, you must be excited about it too. So we're gonna give away. A copy of this. Absolutely. I want you to go and look at the patterns and tell us which pattern is your favorite in the contest thread. And in episode 179, two weeks from now, we will draw a winner of Sock Architecture, which is, I think, one of my favorite books that we've gotten so far from Cooperative Press. I think it's one of my favorites, too. It's just... It's fascinating, and I again, I love that they have that navigation where you can hop around to the table yeah. of content. Makes it easier. But yeah, this looks very interesting. Um, I've seen a lot of sock techniques because I've been knitting for most of my life, and there is a bunch of stuff in here that I have never heard of. I'm sure people that really are into sock knitting have heard of more than me. But there's stuff in here that I'm like, wow, I never heard of that. It's kind of cool to have it all in one book. So, um, yeah, check it out. I will link to the um, Ravelry pattern page so you can see all the patterns. And um, tell us which one you like the best, which one you would knit. And hopefully you'll win this and you can knit a bunch of cool socks and tell us how it worked out. Yeah, I love the color combination she's used to blue and green. I like those colors. It's a good, it's a nice book. Again, another winner from Cooperative Press. I really feel like they do a good job of publishing things that knitters would knit. actually use. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for real knitters. <laughs> yeah, the ones we've gotten have been really kind of nice. Yeah, they, we have gotten some good ones. So this is, but this is definitely one of my favorites. I don't even like knitting socks. And I'm like, I would knit a sock just, maybe when I knit my, um, Dia de los Muertos socks. I'll use one of these techniques. You never know. 
I'll probably use a fish lips kiss heel because I, I probably will too. I only have so much <laughs> yarn. <laughs> I only have so much patience. Yeah. And I'm knitting it on two and a half inch needles because two and a half inch. I know two, what you meant. US 2.5. I, I know what you meant. Probably US so, 2.5. You know what we skipped? What did we skip? Crushes and heartbreaks. <gasps> oh, yeah. I have a quick crush. I ended up getting the days off that I requested for Rhinebeck. So she can go. It's can no go. more. Just go without me. So what I might try and do is see if I can switch Monday with someone. Yeah. Ooh, and stay the whole time. Then you could drive with us. Exactly. Ooh, so and we'll then see. you could pay us more money, and we had even more money to spend. Than <laughs> so we'll see. So my um my my crash and heartbreak this week is a heartbreak. Um, I'm dedicating this episode to my friend Doug, Doug Sweet, who died on August 28th. And Doug, I met. He was one of my friends from law school. I met him probably the first week of school. I was an older student because I started when I was either 24 or 25. I want to say 24, but it might have been 25. I can't even remember now. That's not even that old. <laughs> well, most of the people there were like 22. So I was a few years older. I was married. Um, the people that I hung out with, we had a couple of friends in our gang of guys and girls that were um, right out of college. But most of us were the ones that had taken a few years off before we went back to school. And uh, the thing that was really special about Doug is he was in his 50s, and he was totally blind. And he had worked many, many years at the EEOC um, doing equal opportunity. Okay, I'm like, um, what's the EEOC? Equal opportunity complaints. And probably because growing up blind, he was injured as, as a child, and he lost his sight. He had to deal with discrimination mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, people trying to say he couldn't do things his whole life. And I think he really sympathized with people that um, were in that position. And he, But he, he had always dreamed of being a lawyer. And so he went back to school in his 50s to make a career change. Good for him. And um, he was kind of like a, a bizarre, foul-mouthed father figure. <laughs> foul-mouthed is the wrong word. Let's just say for somebody who worked at the EEOC, Doug had a very, um, had a knack for telling horrible off-color jokes. Oh, really? <laughs> Horribly inappropriate jokes. Now, it, we all thought it was funny, but I, I, it just always struck me as funny that a guy that would have worked in the, e in the EEOC would be making off-color jokes, but he always had these horrible jokes. <laughs> and, and, um... And he was very outspoken and opinionated because he, I think because he'd had spent his whole life basically fighting just to do what he wanted to do. So um, when I was really financially strapped, he came up with a plan for me to be his aide. And I was given a laptop by the school and I took notes for him, which meant I got to sit in the front row so I could hear because I have hearing loss in one ear. And I sat next to Doug, and I typed all of the, of the class notes, and then he read them with a computer program cool. on his computer, and I got paid for it. And that money came in handy, and I'll, I'll never forget that. And I'll just never forget how funny he was and how crazy. He was always getting injured because when you're blind, you run into stuff a lot of times. One time he fell into the subway rails, like... Mm. But he was always fine. Like, he'd come into right. school with a giant, like, gash and stitches on his forehead. Oh, yeah, I fell into the subway. You know, <laughs> it was just one of those crazy Doug things. And um, he was always joking. He had a giant head. We used to, we used to joke that um, if he wanted to wear a hat, he'd have to get a walk from Chinatown to fit on his head. Oh, jeez. Or that small planets could orbit around his head, you know. Um, but he was a lot of fun. He, we would go out drinking with him after school and, um, I have a lot of really happy memories of hanging Good. out with him. And, um, it, I was devastated to find out that he had died. His wife got in touch with me and, um, I sent around a message to our friends so they would know. So rest in peace, Doug. It was... It was good knowing you. It's it's like a part of my law school thing. Aww. And um, I hope you're not telling too many off-color jokes. <laughs> <laughs> up, 
up with the big guy. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's in a special heaven where people are all really body and they tell naughty jokes. I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. He's a good guy. So I dedicate this show to him. And, um, you know, it's just weird. I still, it still hasn't really sunk in yeah. that he's not here anymore. But I've never had a friend, like a friend friend die before. Okay. Uh, no, I take that back. I did. Tragically, unfortunately. Well, so. fortunately for Doug, he died in his sleep. Good. So. I hope we all do that. He had a peaceful passing. Yeah. That's nice. And um, he sure left an impression on a lot of lives. I bet he did. Sounds yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> Good or bad, depending on, you know, everybody know. loved Doug. That was the thing about him. He could tell a totally raunchy, inappropriate joke. And, like, it somehow worked. Like, Maybe nobody was offended. Maybe because of his, his <laughs> disability. I don't know. He was so You tend funny. to be more accepting. We always used to tease him about it. He was really, you know, like, we would tease him about, we're going to hide from you. <laughs> Like horrible things that you would never say to somebody oh, who's right. blind. <laughs> if you're not, if you don't leave, if you stop, don't stop acting now. We're gonna hide from you. Oh, that's funny. Uh, he was funny. Yeah. Uh, and he would sometimes get the case names and stuff wrong in class because he had to listen to all of his books. That's right. Um, he had um, this program where he could scan all of his textbooks in and it would read them, but the electronic it, it voice with so like well. makeup names and he'd be like in the case of Johannesson and then he'd be it's like be Johnson or Johansson and he's like oh yeah I don't know my computer <laughs> there was the Carol the defendant you mean Carol <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> you know you have to kind of That's roll funny. with it that's funny. <laughs> and he had to take his, his bar exam alone because, oh. um, well, you know, like in, a, another, in another room, room because yeah. he had to have accommodations um, since he couldn't see. So that was, we all were like in a giant basement room at the World Trade Center in Boston, but he was he had a special room. <laughs> he was special. And we all went out. He was special. He was very special to me, um, and I'll never forget him, so... He was oh, a good mentor good. and a weird, weird buddy. <laughs> so rest in peace, Doug. And on that kind of depressing note, it's not depressing, though, because he, he lived a totally awesome life. Who He had a whole career and then a whole other career. Yeah. He was doing mediation oh, and good. helping people um, settle their issues before they had to go to court, which I think is kind of awesome. Yeah. So, um, and he has great family, grandkids. I love his wife. She's a sweet woman, too. So he, he lived a good life. Good. So I hope everybody has a good life this week. And don't forget to go to the thread and check out our contests for the pattern and the um, sock architecture book. Yes. So have a great week. Knit with heart. heart. Happy birthday, Sheila. Thank you. Bye. Bye.